Today is the last day we hear from the book of Exodus. The beginning of this reading, I already explained the structure of the whole Exodus. And I hope some of you were able to go through it. If not, still there is time. It's so beautiful to go through the book of Exodus. Um, today is the last part, the furnishing and building of the sanctuary. Just before that, we need to understand a little bit if you want to uh, clearly understand what we heard today. In Exodus chapter 33, verses 2 and 3, there Moses was requesting to God, God, come with me. God sent an angel before him. And in Exodus chapter 33, the same chapter, 16 to 19, there we see Moses was pressing, Moses was saying, God, if you are not coming with us, I'm not ready to go. And most of the time, I think that's what's prayer. Every time we are praying to God, God, come with me. It's so nice to begin the day with the mass. We are all coming to the church and we are praying to God, come with me. I remember, one of, you know, my spiritual mother, I would say, she was in her uh, late uh, 80s. She was a Carmelite nun. She died many, many, uh, I mean, 15 years ago. Once she shared a story with me. She said she just joined the convent with that idea, I will be able to spend so a lot of time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. I'll be able to pray. But the moment I entered the convent, I just came to know this is completely a different world. I'm not getting any time to spend time in prayer because she had a lot of other responsibilities. She was a great nun, did a lot of school and so many other things. But initially I was disappointed. And after that, I started praying to the Lord, Lord, I wish to be with you in this place forever. Today's responsorial psalm also, we hear that Psalm 84. How beautiful is to spend time in front of the Lord. Psalm says, Psalm 84, it is better to be elsewhere thousand days than to present one day in your presence. That's the beauty of spending time with the Lord. And she, she was praying. She was a little bit disappointed. But at the end, she said, Lord, I want to stay with you. You know that, but it's not possible. So therefore, you, you come with me. An act of faith. In reality, that's happening in our life because we become a living tabernacle of Jesus. And everyone comes to the church and we genuflect uh, and we pray and we know the presence of God. And we need to realize after receiving communion, we become a living tabernacle. We are carrying Jesus and Jesus is coming with us. So Moses was praying, God, come with me. So God fulfilled that wish. And today's reading we heard, that is Exodus chapter 40, verse 38, the last verse of Exodus. In the daytime, the cloud of the Lord was seen over the dwelling, whereas at night fire was seen in the cloud by the whole house of Israel, in all the stages of their journey. See, our God is always with us, in front of us, behind us, to guide us, our journey towards heaven. Romans 8, 14, St. Paul says, we need to be guided by the Spirit of God. God is always there. So, that's a beautiful first reading. And the response real Sam also connected something with the sanctuary. 
because we it, we are not less privileged than Moses. I would say we are more privileged than Moses because the same God, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Moses, the same God in the ten like today is present here. And we are more privileged because they never had been, been revealed about Jesus, but for us we have Jesus Father, Son, and Spirit, the presence of God is in the sanctuary. And this sanctuary become our living sanctuary in our life because we carry Jesus. So we are so privileged. So from there, today's gospel, it's beautiful. It's a gospel. We heard that good fish and bad fish. So good and evil coexist in this world, whether we like it or not. That's the way it is. There is a great wisdom of God in it. Because our God is so merciful and kind. God wants to give every soul to give an opportunity till the last moment. Who knows that thief at the end, all his life he was stealing. At the end, he stole the kingdom of God also. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So therefore, we need patience. We need to understand. Sometimes, you know, we, we, are, we have no patience. We say, why this is happening? What's going on in the church? What's going on in, you know, everywhere? But we need patience. And we also need to understand this good and evil coexist in us. If you read Romans chapter 7, you will come to know. St. Paul is speaking about it. So therefore, we need to have patience with ourselves first. We need to have patience with the immediate family, the domestic church, our own family who are around us. And we need to have patience with the church. We need to have patience with the world. So that's the way... The kingdom of God operates. So therefore, during this Mass, we can pray for that few things we heard. The first, that grace to acknowledge the presence of God in the midst of the difficulties and messiness of this life. Second, to have that patience so that good will prevail and it will have a greater victory at the end.